Okay, so what does it mean? Once I find a repeat, that one and that one, or once I find a repeat here, like this three and this three, how can I find a number that only has ones and zeros? From, From the fact that one has a remainder one when divided by seven, and this has a remainder of one when divided by seven. How can I use that fact? That number has a remainder of one when divisible by seven, and one has a remainder of one when divisible yeah. by seven to find a number that only has ones and zeros in it. Well, That's you could know that it's between this in these in this range. Of well, it may it may not be in that range. Right. Because like you could have a bunch of ones and like a bunch of threes. Yeah. But I do know that this number has the same remainder as this number when divisible when divided by seven. What does that mean? What does that mean? Mm. It means the same remainder. If they're the same remainder, then how could you find one of the numbers that we're looking for? Yeah, maybe let's go to the fours. Maybe it makes it easier for the fours looking at 11 and 111. How can you use the fact that 111 has a remainder of 3 when divisible by 4 and 11 has a remainder of 3 when divisible by 4 to find a number that only has 1s and zeros when you divide by 4? Well, if you add, you could sub if you subtracted them. Why would that help you? Well, you'd only get 1s and zeros. Ah, oh, when you subtract, you only get ones and zeros. Okay. And they both, if they both have a remainder, of, if they both have a remainder of three, you're then subtracting the remainders away. So what's the remainder when I divide this by four? Nothing. So zero. Zero. So how about over to the sevens? So, so you can subtract, um, subtract this, this from this. And what do I get? So you get one million one hundred eleven thousand one hundred ten. One million one hundred eleven thousand one hundred ten. Which should be divisible by seven. Which should be divisible by seven, assuming we have done our multiplication, right? Can go to Wolfram Alpha. Yeah, I hope Wolfram Alpha can deal with numbers this big. One million one hundred and eleven thousand one hundred and ten divided by seven is da 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 one hundred and fifty eight thousand seven hundred and thirty. Cool. So it's an integer. Good. Just like we suspected. Thank goodness for Wolfram Alpha. Yeah. So this this is the proof that makes it work. Yeah. So what is the proof now for so any number n? What do you do? So you look at you look at all ones. You look at numbers made with all ones, and divide them by n and look at the remainder. Okay. Until you get a repeat. Until I get a repeat, and then what do you do? Then you find. Then you subtract the two num the. So you find a, the number that was repeated and subtract to a, lar a smaller number that had that repeat from a larger number that had that repeat, and the remainder subtract. And then, what does that mean? It means you get that num you get the number. What number? So you get a number that's all ones. And it's made of all ones or zeros. Uh huh. And it's divisible by your number. Right. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So. We're almost done. Mm -hmm. So we walked through this very clever idea with the remainders and the pigeonhole principle. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. All right.